Hello, we are Josep, Chemi, and Clara, three students who are studying the third grade of bilingual primary education at the University of Lleida. During September and until the 20th of December, we were enjoying a fantastic Erasmus in Prague, Czech Republic, where, besides having a great time, we were also learning a lot. To start the project Meet the Love, which we had to carry out during our stay and then finish it at home, we went out to visit and discover the city that will be our home during those months. We let ourselves be carried away by the streets, the smells, the sounds, the emotions, gaining interest at every step for everything that we were finding. Finally, after many things caught our attention, we decided to inquire about religion, asking ourselves the following research question. How can we explain the fact that there are so many churches and places of worship in a city where the 63% of the population is considered agnostic or strictly atheist? We were surprised by the fact that a country like Czech Republic, the capital of which is full of places of religious worship, Christian churches, Protestant churches, synagogues, has a percentage of agnostic or atheist population so high. So, we found this topic interesting and we thought that to investigate this question and its why it could be something exciting and that's how it was. In addition, we also think that in spite of being a question about religion, it could be totally transdisciplinary, thus being able to address different curricular areas from a mathematical, social, cultural or historical perspective among others. Therefore, the objectives of our research have been resolved as follows. In order to understand the evolution of the religiosity in this country, we must inquire in its history. After collecting a lot of information about it, we realized that the history of the religion in Czech Republic is very rich. It has many different stages, and many different religions take place in it. For instance, at the, at the beginning, almost all the population was Catholic. The church supported the monarchy and nobody questioned it. Prague has also had a lot of influence from the Judaism. From 1492, after the end of the reconquest of Spain by the Catholic monarchs, the city began to welcome spreading Jews fleeing persecution in Spain. The Jewish community experienced a flourishing period before emancipating completely during the 18th century. Witness to this influence, the Prague Synagogue is located in the heart of the city. With World War II, Toler and Prague went through dark hours. Before the arrival of communism, the Nazis destroyed the Jewish community. Today, there are only 3,000 Jews left in Czech Republic, concentrated mainly in the capital. In 1968, the opening caused by the Prague Spring introduced a certain regulatory flexibility. Christians and communists managed to cohabit. With the fall of the Berlin Wall, religious communities managed to breathe anew. Since 1991, churches can again celebrate weddings. The religious fact recovered its letter of nobility and its space in the Czech families, both in the couples and in the teaching. Today, protected by the state, religious minorities continue their life with tranquility and anonymity. Czech Republic is known for being an almost completely atheist, and its capital, Prague, is not an exception. 63% of the Czech people does not follow any religion, according to a survey done by the Gallup High School in 2004. Even knowing this, we wanted to discover for ourselves what was the really true. We decided to carry out a survey using the Google Forms. This tool gives us infinite advantages. We prefer a very simple and fast survey with only 4 items, so that it could reach the largest possible name of people. Therefore, we passed the survey to 146 people, from the age of 14 years old to 87 years old. And the results that we obtained are the following ones. Although we know that our results cannot be 100% true, since we shall do a large scale study according to the number of inhabitants of Prague, we can establish the following conclusions in relation to the objective proposed in this section to know if atheism is more extensive in a certain age group or not. The atheism is more extensive in the oldest and most minor respondents. We think that it can be due to different reasons, for example, that nowadays young people are less exposed to religion in general, 
because it is not mandatory like years ago, it has no attraction for them and therefore they do not pay any attention to it. On the other hand, the old people live many times of changes and problems due to religion and that may be the reason of why they have changed their way of living and they don't want to hear about any religion. We were wondering how the religion influences education in case it does, so we asked our tutor from the center, Sarka Abami. We could notice that she was not comfortable talking about this topic, like if it was a taboo, and she asked us not to be filmed during the interview. What she explained is that religion subject is not offered in any public or private center, unless it is a Catholic private center, neither in an optional or compulsory way. Even through this, in some moments of the compulsory education stage, students are taught about the different religions in the world. In the Moravia part of Czech Republic, religion is more spaced, but not in the Bohemia part, where is located the city of Prague. When we chose the topic of our Meet the Globe work, and we knew that a lot of churches in Prague were used to the concerts or our installations, we thought that in a country where the majority of people is atheist, converting the churches in cultural places is a good option. Churches have a good acoustic and usually are beauty places. If you add to this classic music or art, it can be a perfect environment. Despite this, we thought that maybe the Czech people doesn't think the same, and we thought that it would be interesting to know the opinion of them. We questioned it to some people about their opinion about it. The majority of them told us that they agree with that initiative. Here we have an example of a Czech boy talking about that. So I think that uh, public events in churches are a great idea. I attended several several such events. Uh, there was two concerts. There was uh, there was one graduation where people get where students get there. So I think it's a great idea to invite uh, public into churches, even if it's not religious, and to uh, make uh, some events there because it brings brings people together. And uh, then it, it can also open their way, way to religion because they can get into touch with the... During the time we spent in Prague, we could see how the city is a big container of culture. And among this culture, there was a lot of music. We saw that in hardly all the Christmas markets in the city, there was a stage. On the Octon Square Market stage, we could show a church singing. They sang different songs, and some of it were related with the religion, as Ave Maria. In addition, hardly every day there were people singing or playing instruments in the street. As we have said, some of the religious buildings in Prague are used to do concerts or are installation. In this point of our work, we will do a review of the relation that music and religion have had in Czech Republic during the history. Let's start for the medieval era. During this period, there were created some popular religious songs that still nowadays are popular. Two examples of these ones are Mercy Seer, which is the one that we are listening right now, or Saint Venceslao. In the Cosmas Chronicles, Cosmas talks about profound popular songs or professional musicians too. During this period, appears the figure of Juan Haas, who dedicated his time between other things, to cultivate religious songs in the chapel of Bethlehem in Prague, and compose them. Something curious is that Good King Venceslao, a traditional English Christmas song that we are listening right now, tells about a legend of this Bohemia king, but it was created during the 17th century. During the Renaissance, there are notes and illustrations that tell us that the religious songs were related with the instrumental music thanks to the Jesuits. The organ became famous and it was installed to a lot of churches or cathedrals, being the St. Vithos Cathedral, one of the most famous. Music became more popular in the nobility and the chorus orchestra became more and more important, having more singers and instruments. The lute became an important instrument too, alone or as a part of the orchestra. To conclude with this era, we have to say that some of the Czech popular melodies created during the 15th century 
are singing nowadays by the chorus transformed in some religious songs. We arrive to the Baroque period, in which during the second half of the 17th century, the nobility orchestras became the most important music producers. The most important ones were the Olomouc bishops and the second bishops ones. We can see how music, religion and money were three things that went hand in hand. There are testimonials that tell us that in the monasteries people also did profane music. Opera arrived to Czech Republic during the 17th century, but it was in the 18th when it was consolidated. Then the opera directed the Prague Theatre. Despite the fact that he didn't have any relation with the opera, one of the most important personalities of this period was Adam Mishna de Otrabosi, who adapted Czech popular songs and transformed these ones to a spiritual songs for four or five voices. To conclude with this part, we can say that music and religion have had and will have relation. During the past, the religious people and the nobility were the ones with more resources, and so they were the intellectual elite. That's why there are a lot of music creations due to the clergy. Nowadays, music is something more accessible, but they still have relation with religion. Talking about Prague, they do some classical music concerts in the churches, and this is a way in which the church has adapted to the big percentage of attempts in this country. There are a lot of bars, restaurants and clubs where there are people playing live music too, and there's a jazz culture in the city. So, we can say that Prague is a music lover city. Having finished this project, having discovered it, researched, investigated, learned so many things, we would like to present the following conclusions. Some of them are more personal than others, but since it has been an intense work for a long time, we thought it appropriate to put them in as well. The history of each country is very important. Without it, you can judge without argument many aspects of the city, which will be wrong until we know the truth. Many times religious issues are linked to the historical ones. It is for this reason that to solve doubts about religion before you should be clear about the history. We believe that the current use of places of worship concerts, exhibitions, is adequate to continue enjoying these beautiful buildings. The opinion of the citizenships provides us some information that we can take into account, but does not give us 100% truthful data about what we are investigating, occasionally only in some parts. So we have arrived at the end of our project. We hope you have found it interesting and relevant and thank you so much for your attention.